Thanks for joining me as I reflect on this journey I've taken over the past two and a half years. Being a high school floral design teacher did not set me up on a pathway to get a master's in educational technology, but here I am as a candidate for graduation from Boise State University in December of 2012. Crazy! But I began this adventure not knowing where it would take me or even if I could understand the material and make it work for me. Now, eight semesters later, I'm checking out my options for the future and making this technology work in a floriculture classroom. I teach my floriculture course at Everett High School, which has approximately 1,500 students. My students are in all grades, nine through 12, and I average about 30 students in each one of my four class periods. Technology isn't something that you automatically think of when you consider the floral industry, but I hope my students are able to visualize this industry using these 21st century skills. Technology is needed for flower farmers to grow the best cut flowers and for genetic scientists to enhance the characteristics of your favorite flower. Personally, I see students who want to go into careers in business and marketing, and what better things for them to get to use than to use the various options in technology to build their businesses and design those marketing campaigns. This is an area I'm adding to my curriculum and my classes at Boise State have given me the tools to create this additional focus. It's also important for these high school students to learn about the floral industry by using 21st century skills to complete their assignments. The EdTech program at Boise State has provided me with a multitude of web 2.0 tool, tool options. The EdTech program at Boise State has provided me with a multitude of web 2.0 tool options that I can now use to build lessons around. So as much as my floriculture class is supposed to be a hands-on experience, it's evolving into a technology experience as well. Educational technology has opened my eyes to the possibilities. This is something I wasn't even sure was going to happen when I started this program. How could I use these classes at Boise State to enhance my floriculture classroom? Would this master's degree open up other opportunities for me when I'm ready to transition from high school to community college teaching? What could I teach besides floriculture? As overwhelmed as I was at certain points throughout this journey, I now have a clearer picture of where this degree can take me or where I can take this degree. My immediate thought is to use the knowledge I've gained over the past couple of years to teach teachers who want to become career and technical education teachers in the state of Washington. I am on the Professional Educators Advisory Committee for the CTE Teacher Certification Program at South Seattle Community College. This is where I earned my CTE certification in order to teach floriculture. It's a mostly online program with a handful of hybrid classes. I enjoy attending the orientation meetings each quarter to answer questions and guide students to the program that best fits them. Because of the enjoyment I've received on being on this committee the past five years and the knowledge and experience I've gained through my ed tech classes at Boise State, I have the desire to join the instructors in our program and teach an online class at South Seattle. Now I'd like to share with you some of my favorite assignments that might not have been easy, well they were never easy, but in the end taught me to open my mind to the possibilities at hand. One of those possibilities that I've been considering for quite a while is making videos related to floral design. This project in EdTech 513 allowed me that experience. I worked with the PowerPoint and tweaked it to look better and decided to use it for this project. It's really a how-to video on boutonnieres. I used Camtasia as my recording platform and I really liked how it connects up to PowerPoint in order to record as you step through the slides. So I pur purchased it to use for more videos that I wanna create in the future. This will provide me the chance not only to design learning videos for my students, but also for designing my own floriculture curriculum. Let's listen to a segment on my video. 
This step-by-step -step presentation will demonstrate for you how to make a boutonniere. We will use many carnations, but the same technique can be used with sweetheart or even spray roses. First, gather your materials. You will need one open mini carnation bloom, one leaflet from a piece of leather leaf fern, one small cluster of baby's breath, some green floral tape, a number 26 gauge or even a lighter number 28 gauge wire, and finally a boutonniere pin. First, you need to cut off most of the stem of the mini carnation. I took EdTech 541 my very first semester at Boise State. I wanted to know more about using technology in the classroom, and this class opened up many options for me. Standard 2.3 relates to computer-based technologies and the knowledge to produce and deliver materials using microprocessor-based resources. Looking back at this project, I'm a little stunned that I even created it, but I love how all the inst instructors in the EdTech program broke down huge projects into weekly or bi-weekly modules. This website was created using a template on Weebly.com. I love Weebly because it allows me to focus on the content rather than the difficult manner of figuring out how the HTML and CSS codes are going to look. One thing I've learned through this process is that building a website from the bottom up is not for me. I have the information that I want on a site, I just need to find the template to fill in all the information. This was a 10 lesson unit on careers in the floral industry. This is the home page and it is the basic lesson plan for the teacher. Lesson one is a project for creating a timeline of life experiences. It's supposed to be used to help students begin a career search by thinking about their life experiences, such as volunteering, club memberships, vacations, and family experiences. Lesson three gave me the experience of using Edmodo for a classroom assignment. Edmodo was just the platform that I set up for students to turn in their assignments. But this lesson encompassed a lot more. This was about students using social media for research. Students were to search Facebook and various blogs to learn more about the floral industry. Lesson five is one of my favorites. I really enjoy maps for some reason and being able to access so much information online about geography makes creating interesting lessons easy. For this lesson, students needed to do a little research first and locate two flower farms anywhere in the world. Then they needed to use Google Maps and everyone used the same Google Map and each person would pinpoint their locations on the map so that in the end we would end up having maybe 50 or 60 locations of flower farms. It really provides a great visual for students to realize where we import flowers from around the world. Lesson seven was art. So I found Vuvox. This assignment, um, I enjoyed using Vuvox so much that I like, actually created the assignment where students needed to learn to use it too. Um, you can see that there are links where you can go to different videos or websites. Um, and down here on Love Happens, there's a question mark um, by this picture of Jennifer Aniston. She plays a florist in this movie. So if you just place your cursor over the question mark, it says, who was the floral designer for Love Happens? So you click on it. And it takes you to a flower blog that's based in the Teleflora website. And you can find out more information about the real life floral designer that served as the onset floral consultant for this romantic comedy, Love Happens. This is really a great way to organize information into a visually appealing format to get students excited um, about, about their assignments. Finally, this technology checklist is just for the instructor, um, just to make sure that 
everything that was needed for every lesson was thought through and it was available and it was working correctly um, and making sure that everything was accomplishing the desired result. All in all, this was a huge endeavor, and I will continue to use it in my floriculture class with some tweaks, but it's exciting to see a final product that's totally online with assignments that are, be, that are created online without all the paper handouts. My Symbaloo tutorial that I created for EdTech 522 has brought the most attention of anything that I've made public. So far at this recording, it's seen um, it's had about 271 views. Symbaloo is, is an online bookmarking system that I was introduced to back in EdTech 501, I think. Um, but for some reason, it's intrigued me, and I keep coming back to it. I think it's because it's very visually stimulating, and it allows for a lot of user control and designing. So let's listen in on my tutorial for a moment. Symbaloo is easy and fun to use. You are in charge of how you want it to look and how many tiles that you need. All your favorite bookmarks are clearly marked and you can organize them by placement or color. You can even create more web mixes for different interests that you have. Finally, during the summer semester of 2012, I was able to take EdTech 597, Blogging in the Classroom, this is a class I've been wanting to take during the whole program, but it was only offered during the summer. So during my last summer in this program, I made sure to set aside all the time to take it. Blogging is something I'm interested in, not only as a teacher, but in my life outside of teaching as well. I've started research for a new blog about nonprofits that are available that, that people might not know about, but are looking for some place to donate to. So let's look at my blog. For my teaching life, I started this blog during EdTech 597, and at the start of this blog, I created this place for floral educators to go and to network with other floral educators across the country. But I found out that many of my students, as well as former students, are enjoying the information I put there. After the class was over, I set it aside for a while, but I plan on continuing this blog as, as I listed in my blogging plan that we needed to complete for class. So I already have ideas for six or seven more posts, and I'm sure ideas will continue to pop in my head along the way. This blog was created through the assignments in the course, so for each week we needed to write different types of posts, such as reflective entries, commentaries, polls, lists, and we even had to set up a guest entry. So I chose a former student of mine that decided to pursue a career in the event industry based on taking several semesters of floriculture in high school. But the one that received the most comments was my how-to post on designing a pumpkin arrangement. I designed it just like a recipe and I used photographs that I had taken the previous fall. So many of my blogging classmates commented on how they love this post and they wish they could be in my floral class too. I enjoy being able to post photographs, embed videos, and provide links for further information directly inside my blog. And it's easy to create an entry based on recent events and trends. My last couple of posts here at the top uh, were related to what part do flowers play in the Olympics? So many um, people don't even think about this, but I had posted a photo of the London Olympics flowers that are given to each medalist. These are the flowers right here. And a picture of them at a medal ceremony. I'm always excited about seeing what flowers are chosen to showcase for the Olympics based on what um, city that they're going to be in. I've really accomplished more and understand how to integrate these new skills into my floriculture classroom. This degree will provide me some opportunities to take another step deeper into education and reach my goal of teaching career and technical education teachers online. My past 11 years in the classroom and the fact that I came out of industry to teach floriculture give me an unusual perspective in the midst of science and math teachers 
needing to get certified to be STEM teachers, and many people rethinking careers in order to shift into education from their industries. Technology is driving education, and this is where I need to be. More and more opportunities are becoming available to teach online, and this degree also provides me the knowledge to create an online or hybrid floriculture curriculum. The floral industry will always be a part of who I am. It's just time to see where I can take that experience and mesh it with my educational technology experience. I appreciate all the instructors who pushed me through their assignments to learn aspects of technology I thought I'd never understand. EdTech 502 with Dr. Andy Hung was probably one of the most frustrating classes only because my brain just doesn't accept HTML code and decode it correctly. I constantly was needing to refer to my HTML quick start guide, but I made it through enough to have a huge respect for those who work with it on a daily basis. EdTech 505 with Dr. Ross Perkins was another one I struggled with. Not him specifically, but just the thought process that you need to go through to really evaluate properly. I had to figure out how to make that class click with me, and the only way I could figure out was to do my 505 project on a floriculture textbook evaluation. Even still, it was the class I made my lowest grade in, a B. I was glad when that semester was over. In the beginning, Dr. Barbara Schroeder built up an excitement in EdTech 501 for what the whole program was going to encompass and all the possibilities that lay ahead. I enjoyed her so much in the beginning that I chose her specifically to end the program with this semester in EdTech 592. And finally, the light of my whole two and a half years was that encouraging instructor in EdTech 512 and 513, Dr. Diane Hall. All I had to go on was that great photo with the smiling face of someone so far away, but her enthusiasm and knowledge of creating an online curriculum instilled in me an excitement for what I could do with a floriculture curriculum and how I could make it work. I give my thanks to each of you and hope that I can carry the excitement forward through the coming years and the next time you see that beautiful arrangement of flowers in the local flower shop, remember that your willingness to allow a floriculture teacher into your program might just impact that young adult you see behind the counter. Thank you for setting the example and pushing me into areas I never thought possible.